Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at build 21277. This build includes a number of notable changes and enhancements over the last few builds uh, and indeed the last build video which was 20238 I think, it's been a little while. Uh, but yes we're back, there are some notable changes in this build uh, and we should just dive right in. So the first notable change in this build is that there's a new animation for opening and closing app windows. Uh, it's a subtle change but it exists and that's what it looks like uh, when opening and if I close it it looks like that. I think the close animation isn't actually new. The blog post mentions the close animation is new as well, but to me it looks the same as the old one. Uh, but the open animation definitely is different. It's a little bit slower now and also, in my opinion, a little bit more static. Um, I don't actually like this new animation. I think it's it needs a little bit more personality. It's very, very sort of... I don't know really. I, don't, I can't really put my finger on what's wrong with it, but I, I just don't really like it. And here's what it looks like when you have an app that's maximised. Yeah, I just... I don't know if I like it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like it or not. I don't think I'm a big fan. It needs, I'll tell you what it needs. It needs It needs to be eased in and eased out. It needs to sort of start slow, get faster, then slow down as the maximize or as the open animation finishes and then the same going backwards. Uh, but it just doesn't do it. It's the same sort of speed the whole way through and I think that's what's making it seem weird. Anyway, that's the animation. Okay, moving on. Another new change in this build is with a brand new voice typing launcher interface thing. So Windows has had voice typing for quite a while now. You usually access it with the Windows key plus H. Uh, but if we access it now by pressing that same key combination, you'll see that the interface here is actually quite a bit different. And you can see it's already doing it here. Uh, but there's a couple of notable changes here. There's a new voice typing launcher, which if you turn that on, uh, whenever I stop using this, I click away. If I click on a text field again, you'll see this mini version of it sort of show up and I can have that show up wherever I want on the screen. So whenever I click into a text field, so this one here, for example, it will show up in the corner and then I can enable voice dictation that way. Or if I'm in File Explorer, if I click up here, the voice dictation thing will launch here. Then I can press on that and now it's listening to my voice and we're doing uh, voice dictating, which is super cool. So yeah, you can also turn on and off auto punctuation, which is super nice. And you can also learn how to start contributing your voice clips, which uh, pops up this window. And it says, help voice typing learn from real talk. Your everyday use of voice typing could make Microsoft's online speech tech more accurate for everyone who speaks your language. So we can either turn this on or off. So if you don't want people listening to your voice, then say no, thank you. And there you go. So there you go, that's a quick look at the new voice typing launcher. Again, voice typing has been part of Windows 10 for a while, but the actual interface here is what's new with this feature, uh, and that's uh, super cool. So another change in this build is a brand new emulation layer for Windows 10 on ARM devices so that they can now run uh, 64-bit applications. So previously, uh, Windows 10 on ARM devices could only run x86 apps via emulation. 64-bit uh, apps wouldn't work, uh, but now they do, and... Um, and now they do. Now it is a little bit hit and miss. Things like Chrome don't really work properly yet. Uh, but otherwise, it runs just like you would expect. If I launch any sort of program that's 64-bit compatible, it will just load like normal. It might take a little while because it is running an emulation, but um, it does work and it works quite nicely. There's nothing here I can launch, unfortunately. But you don't need to see it. It's, it's an application. It looks like it does on normal Windows 10. You get the idea. It works quite nicely. So another change in this build is with how the apps list uh, shows some legacy applications. So a lot of legacy Windows apps will install themselves into a folder in the start menu, which is kind of unnecessary if there's only one application in that folder. Uh, Slack is a perfect example. You can see here Slack normally installs itself in the folder, but we don't need a folder there. There's only one app inside the Slack folder. So with build 21277, Microsoft has updated the behavior of the start menu to just remove that folder. If a folder has one application in it, it will just assume you don't want a folder and just place that app in the main apps list just like this. And this just makes it quicker to access the app and is overall much better in my opinion. Now, if we come into settings and go down to apps here, you'll see that there's an option called archive apps. Now, this isn't new to this build. It's apparently been a while, around for a while. Uh, but I don't know what it does. Um, archive apps to save storage space and internet bandwidth. Apps you don't use frequently will be archived automatically. Your files and other data will be saved. And the next time you use an archived app, it'll connect to the internet and ought to restore the full version if it's still available. Uh, I have this on, but I haven't noticed any difference in the apps that are installed here. Um, I assume this is similar to the feature on iOS, where if you're not using an app for a while, it will sort of 
delete the app essentially but keep the icon in your start menu or home screen uh, so when you click on it again next time it'll quickly sort of pop up a window saying just downloading hang on a sec then it will launch the app with all of your saved data as if it was never removed in the first place uh, but i've not been able to get it to work um so but there it is it's on and off you can turn it on or off if you want to um and it, the, the setting is hidden in archive apps so there you have it. That's a quick look at build 21277. Uh, we will be back when there's more changes in a future build. But until then, thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.